Greetings and salutations everybody and welcome back to the Unpopular Opinion Podcast, a show where we have an opinion and it's more than likely going to be unpopular. So, in the wake of all the news that's been happening in the world, obviously Game of Thrones having a disappointing finale, another side point has unfortunately got swept under the rug and that was the announcement of Rick and Morty Season 4. That's right, everybody's favourite nihilistic duo in the science fiction comedy world are coming back for a fourth season in November and it was met with a lukewarm response. Mm. Realistically, I did not hear anybody really getting excited about it when it was shared online. Like, I don't think anybody really gave much of a, a consideration towards it, you know? Like, I, th- I think it was the, the two-year gap. If you're going to have a two-year gap, people are going to forget. Like, a two-year gap since three, season three, people are going to forget. And they did the exact same thing between season two and season three. So, um, yeah, I think that played a part in the lack of excitement. It's odd because, like, you know, this is Rick and Morty we're talking about here. Rick and Morty is obviously one of the biggest TV shows going in the world right now. You could argue it's the biggest comedic cartoon. It's the biggest comedic cartoon that's going right now. Like, you know, I went to the cinema to go see Hereditary last year. And there, even though there is nothing completely Rick and Morty related in a cinema whatsoever, mm-hmm. they were still selling Rick and Morty posters and t-shirts. You go to the HMV, they're selling Rick and Morty t-shirts and posters mm. and stuff like that. I mean, I'm lying to I mean, I, I'm being a bias there because I've got the Rick and Morty art book in my house because I think some of the designs of the Xenomorphs, particularly when Beth becomes a Xenomorph in the episode where, you know, the Tiny Rick episode, I think that was a cool design. Yeah, some of the animation in those older episodes and some of the uh, the art style is really cool. That's, that's one thing Rick and Morty has going for it. It's always been a very unique looking show. Nothing else really looks like Rick and Morty, does it? Mm. And nothing else really feels like Rick and Morty no. as well. And it's really coined into a new sort of fandom and generation. Mm. However, we've now got season four. So on the whole, like, are you excited for season four coming out? Because like, I should point out, Louis stayed up till half past two in the morning <laughs> watching all of season three because he I hasn't did. watched it yet. I did. I watched the first two seasons of Rick and Morty about two years ago. And then I never really got around to watching season three. So I watched it last night and it was... On a whole, it was an okay season. I'd probably rate it 7 out of 10. There was there was a good 5 or 6 episodes I really liked. And then there was a few I was not a big fan of. So I really liked the uh, the Pickle Rick episode. Mm. Uh, the one where Morty's arm gets huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, an episode I was not a fan of was the one where they kept inserting memory capsules. Oh yeah, that was a and bad it, episode. I wasn't just, a fan of that one. It's just loads of clips and it feels really all over the place and the structure is just weird. It's like one of those old Simpsons episodes where they just show clips from old episodes. Yeah. It was just felt like a waste of an episode in the series. See, my problem was, I was very disappointed with season three. Uh, mm. There was a lot in it that was good. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there was a lot in it that was really well. But it had one of the worst finales to an episode, I think, of a TV show not Game of Thrones, but like you know, like like it goes. Like you gotta remember, like the ending of season two was a really troubling, traumatic, but brilliant episode in which Rick sacrifices himself mm. to save his family because he wanted them to be better. And even though they, he felt that he was yeah. going to betray the family, they all moved on without him, and that was great. And he goes to prison, all to the theme of heart by Nine Inch Nails, and it's powerful and it's good stuff. So you're just like, where can they go after mm. all this? And season three's ending was just like. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Like, yeah, it felt like they were they, because obviously season the end of season two leads right into season three. Yeah. So it felt like a sort of continuity, and it felt like they didn't want to do that anymore. They just wanted to go back to standalone episodes where Rick and Morty go on a self-contained adventure. Yeah. And then by the next episode, it's completely forgotten about. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I can see why if you really liked the ending to season two, you would be quite disappointed by season three. Uh, also, Rick and uh, not Rick, uh, Jerry and Beth getting back together felt very forced. But you know, oh, like, can, I, can <laughs> I just say one thing? Now I'm gonna address this, and this is like I don't know, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I don't care. Anyway. I hate Jerry. I want him to die. Oh, no, if anything lovely. happens in season four, Jerry's death has to happen. Mm. I hate pathetic characters, and mm. Jerry is the most pathetic person in existence. And the more Rick proves it, the more mm. we understand. Yes, Jerry's an arsehole. He's willing to blame his kids for the breakup of an alien partner because he's not willing to, you know, actually just be mm. a true adult and just do it himself. Like I just hate Jerry. I hate Jerry. I hate Jerry. Uh, he's got I, he's got a good heart. Okay. But that's the thing. This like the show is so nihilistic, though, in its own way. Yeah, that's why. That's why I like him because yeah, he like, stands out so much. Yeah, like the show is so depth in nihilism that it's not about having mm. a good heart. It's about how you yeah. live in this world. Because uh, the second last episode of Rick and Morty, when Rick gives that speech to Beth, when he says, "When you know nothing matters, the universe is yours. 
Yeah, you yeah. know, you have free reign over and control. That. That's an existential uh, existentialism for me. And I love that because that is mm. everything that I try to live by. And it's up in the air. It's an ambiguous thing of whether or not you think Beth's a clone or not. And I love that. But you get to this season finale, you're just kind of like, oh, well, looks like everything's back to normal then. Mm. Like, you know, there's going to be more misadventures of Rick and Morty doing their own <laughs> self-contained things and nobody's going to... I just could not give a shit. It's a pro and a con, isn't it? Because it means we're not going to have to be stuck in the same plot structure that the end of season two and season three and the start of season three we're in. We're going to get uh, maybe more unique episodes. It's kind of like how The Simpsons was. Like, there's, It's very rare that two Simpsons episodes tell the same story maybe the who shot mr burns episode yeah but it's always different stuff and i think ugh, maybe they just want it didn't want to put themselves in a box when it came to writing i don't know because like it like but you say this right but like dan Harmon, the writer the co the the co-writer and creator of rick and morty mm-hmm. he's all about structure and being in a box he loves doing structure like there's there's videos of on him online showing you how he does his writing for rick and morty mm-hmm. and it's all in this self-contained box of what he thinks is important for what how a Rick and Morty episode should be written, yeah. so it's a surprise for it. Like if you think that they're wanting to get away from that, but it's like, nah. I think Dan Harmon really wants to stick in the structure. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like a. I mean, I think like you know he's obviously got different opinions to how he thinks about Rick and Morty now and all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like he quite clearly hates the fan base. Would you say his heart's not in it anymore? Oh or? god, yeah, you could tell that. Wow. Well, I don't know. Like I mean. For a lot of people, like you know, like obviously, like when the news came out, I genuinely thought there would be more of an a buzz and an excitement about it than I than. Uh, uh, they released it at a strange time with the finale of Game of Thrones, and you could say with Endgame coming out, it kind of got buried under the rug. Yeah, 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 like uh, it's a weird time to announce. I still think season four will do well because Rick and Morty has a very loyal, if slightly cringy fan base. Loyal and vocal <laughs> and cringy fan base, yeah. the sort of cringy fan base that stand on top of a McDonald's counter and scream that they want Szechuan sauce. Mm. That's, that's 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 online, by the way. If you I, give I, anybody over that, it's, I, it's I, embarrassing. I think that might have been a parody, but I guess we'll never know. No, but like, it's just, I'm at this point now, like, I want to see Rick and Morty do well. I mean, but I'm going to throw it out there. I don't even think Rick and Morty's the best cartoon to watch on online just now, or in the general viewing public. I mean, my favourite comedic cartoons always been the simpsons and uh, i don't think rick and morty's ever going to get close to that because it, I mean, the simpsons had so much heart as well as uh as well as laughs and i don't think there's a few rick and morty episodes that make you tear up a little bit and sad but it's never been quite the, the they've never got the balance quite right i don't think i do like the nihilistically yeah, glum yeah, approaches yeah, yeah. of rick and morty like the episode where rick and morty literally have to bury themselves in an alternate reality yeah, like, or, uh, i love that there was one episode i watched last night in season three where they just it's like right at the start of the episode and they go on an adventure and then they just get back to rick's space pod and they just like burst out crying and they're yeah. like, we can't do this anymore yeah it goes yeah. on for like two minutes I, like, I love that scene i just yeah. love the power because they are driving home that hard-hitting message i mean yeah it's not mm. my favorite show as we all know bojack horseman i mean it handles the humor and the real sentimentality yeah. and mainly heart better than most shows do but like for what Rick and Morty is and it's fan base I would like to see it I would like uh, to see a season 4 I just want to see a season 4 that's improved from season 3 I want them to continue in that st- uh, like in that linear structure where they all have a story where they all intertwine where they all sort of feel like I mean because that's what that's where the strength of Rick and Morty comes from because you really get to learn more about these arcs because of its linear feel everything feels like it's going in the same direction yeah uh, we're getting more growth of Summer. We're getting more growth of Morty. We're getting more of a, like, an understanding of where Beth is coming from. You know, mm-hmm. all we're learning from Jerry is that he needs to die. No, I, th- I think Jerry has his place because when you've got like all these depressed, uh, nihilistic characters, I do think you need someone who's like he's really basic and simple, but he's got a good heart, and it makes the other characters seem a bit uh, <laughs> more out there. So I don't know. I'm a, I've always been a fan of Jerry. I mean, he, I can I get why people don't like him, but. I, in I, a show I, the, I like him. In the show where the main con- the, the main construction of what Rick and Morty is about is pretty much just a nihilism. Hmm. And, a, and like not even to say that, you know, like a fake nihilism, because all of these fake nihilists coming out of Rick and Morty are pissing me off. But like there is a genuinely nihilistic tone. The, but on one hand, you know, you look at Rick, he's got a planet that's a million red-headed girlfriends, and at the end of the episode he wants to kill himself. And then there's another episode where Jerry's just kind of happy just weed whacker in his uh, yeah. the stone pavement. And you're just kind of like, it is a hard contrast. Yeah. Um, I still hate him as a character just because he makes stupid decisions and he's, you know, he thinks rather, he doesn't think logically. He does, but that's what humans do. I think that's what makes him relatable. He makes a lot of mistakes. I don't know, because we he's, look, got, he's got a good heart. Because we look at how Rick is, and unfortunately, everybody wants to be Rick. Well, Rick is not. 
Rick is a cartoon character, put it that way. No one in re- the real world is like Rick. But people do want to be Rick. They want to be him, but that's just because they enjoy the cartoon. But if, if Rick was real, he would hate what Rick and Morty is. Yeah. He's kind of like... like, uh, like... Don't, don't get me wrong, I think he's a good character. I'm just saying he's not a realistic character, which is fine, it's a cartoon. He shouldn't be a realistic character. No, there shouldn't be any realism in Rick and Morty. Like, uh, there's more realism in Bojack than there is in Rick and Morty. Yeah. And, and, I, and that's fine. You could say The Simpsons as well. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes in The Simpsons. But, yeah. like, you know, that... Like that's a whole other podcast in itself about when the Simpsons went wrong. Classic Simpsons. Yeah. Like season series one through nine. Yeah, yeah. But like it. everything else that led on from that moment, like I just I want to see Rick and Morty do well. Hopefully it does well and hopefully it picks up the same attention that it's got. But I'm kind of like it's very weird for me that Rick and Morty is quiet on the internet. Mm. That you know season four is announced. It's coming out in November this year. Mm. And you're like, damn, this is gonna be exciting, this is gonna be good stuff. But as like you said, they released it they released the news at the wrong time. Endgame yeah. came out, Game of Thrones Game came, of Thrones out. came out. Like, like, you, there was like as as much as as popular as Rick and Morty is, it's quite clearly mm-hmm. not as popular as a Marvel franchise yeah. or an anticipated TV show that's been going on longer than the, than the mm-hmm. cartoon itself. Yeah. So, do you have any predictions for season four, or do you not have a clue? Well, I would like to see the League of Beths. You know, like you know, because obviously we've got the Citadel of Ricks, <laughs> and they've hinted at the League of Beths, and the only way the League of Beths is possible is if they say that Beth at the end of the last episode was the clone all along. Yeah, all. that that was a really cool episode yeah. actually. And kills Jerry. <laughs> I just hate him. I hate Jerry. Uh, I don't if, if he comes back after sure, <laughs> no, they'll, they'll find a way. Or uh, when Evil Morty is uh, like you know, I'll, we'll probably get more stuff with Evil Morty as well. Uh, doing some Evil Morty stuff. We'll probably get some other things like that. But like, I want to mm. see just like, I want to want to go back to that good old fashioned Rick and Morty nihilism thing, and I hope it continues on the thread of this is all a continuation story. It's all going in one direction, and it's all going to be in. Uh, it's all self contained, yeah. and it's not just a sort of episodic. Rick and Morty do this one week, and mm. Rick and Morty do that one so week. So you think it's better when it's like a continuation story rather than self-contained? Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm not one for okay. self. No, I'm not one for self-contained stories. Uh, I think that's one of the, like the Simpsons' biggest strengths is that it's a completely new thing every. Yeah, but when I guess it's a strength and a weakness because it it does kind of ruin character development and that, stuff. That's but... literally where I was about to go on because when you have it when it's when it's self-contained, you can't grow yeah. the characters. But then you get to an argument: Should co- like comedy shows be more about making people laugh, or more about like actual character development? Well, like, I guess you got to get the balance right. If you want to laugh at something, if you want to watch something and laugh at something, then you know you do have that. But like, if you want, like for the, for the case mm. of Family Guy, well, for the for the case of The Simpsons and Rick and Morty, because their stories are so intertwined, like you know, you can all relate to something that's going on in there. You want them to be out in the open, and you want to see it going on in your path, yeah. you know. The same could have been said for Family Guy, but they resorted to trying to make people laugh and look where they went wound up. Yeah, I've, I've never been a big Family Guy fan. I would always take Rick and Morty that, over that show. Yeah, and and it's and also we could be perfectly honest here. I'd rather watch all of the bad problems of Rick and Morty over any season of Big Mouth. Hmm. And if you want to know what I mean by that, I did a review on why me and Louie made a review called "Reasons Why Big Mouth Is Shit," and it's on my YouTube channel. Check that out. Mm. I hate that show. No, I'm not watching season two, but that's a divergent. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. It's very hard to predict Rick and Morty, obviously, because there's there's no real continuation now. Um, I don't know. I'd like to see uh, Morty and Jessica see if there's any more <laughs> development to that, because it seems like there's a little bit, and then it just goes away, and then it comes back. Yeah, like you know, but maybe like, it's uh, implying. Maybe that she's starting to get the gears in her head that maybe Morty's yeah, because right that game. episode where it, Morty's and Rick split into their good and toxic <laughs> sides, and she really wants toxic Morty back because the new one just never shuts up. He becomes Patrick Bateman. Pretty much, yeah. He's he, he, a sociopath <laughs> or yeah. psychopath. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see that relationship developed a bit more. Um, it's a, it's so it's such a hard show to predict because literally anything could happen in Rick and Morty. And Dan Harmon doesn't really like to write to people's mm. expectations. I mean, no one could predict Rick would turn into a pickle. So, yeah. So who knows? He yeah, could, he could turn into a tripod in the next season for all we know. <laughs> well, whatever they want to turn him into next. But that episode didn't really do that well. I mean, people like it. But yeah. No, nah, like. Uh, I don't know. I, just... I liked it because of how ridiculous and stupid it was. Well, like... that's the thing, though. At the end of the day, Rick, Rick and Morty has to be ridiculous in order to, for oh. it to work. People f- take it far too seriously than what that actually is. Mm. Like, there's the one episode, like, this is the joke that I reference with you a lot. It's in season two, and it's when Jerry's in hospital, and the doctor says to him, Mr. Smith, uh, Shrimply right. Pibble's life <laughs> can be saved if we replace his heart with yeah. your human penis. It's, now, it's, it's just so stupid. It's too stupid to... That's what Even makes it work. Like, like, it, the only way it could work is if it was so stupid. Yeah. And it does. 
And I want Rick and Morty to go back to being that stupid and just want to have that nonsensical and yeah. about it. And all these people making fan theories about the psychology and the yeah, it's, philosophy. It's really, it. it's really not that deep, guys. Like, it's, guys are, like, some of the fans are a- acting like, oh, you have to be so intelligent to understand Rick and Morty. I know that's a bit of a meme, but some fans probably actually think like that. Yeah. And just some fans acting like this is the best TV show of all time. Like, it's a, it's a good show. I think it's it's well written it's funny um but at the same but it's not the best show of all time yeah it's not like it's not like i I get it if you think it's deep go ahead that's great but remember there is literally an episode where an alien asks a man for his penis to save his alien leader i think that it's just got really good writing like really clever writing and then people have mistaken that for the show actually being really deep (laughs) yeah yeah but that's the thing though dan Harmon's just a talented writer you can't you can't go over how good dan Harmon a writer is like he wrote community he wrote uh you know he's obviously writing rick and morty and he's he's doing this other stuff with world of warcraft the guy knows how Mm. to put pen to bit of paper problem is though right because nobody else has ever seen a style of writing like that before they automatically assume that he's the best of his type and the truth is he's just doing what other writers should be doing and that is actually taking time and structuring the scripts oh yeah like uh, especially compared to those game of thrones writers that like you can tell uh rick and morty writers would they properly thoroughly went through the scripts so. if, if you want to hear our opinion of the game of thrones episode click the link above <laughs> but no um yeah i don't know like i just i hope like i don't know I, I, maybe i'm being a bit paranoid here maybe i just don't think rick and morty maybe because it came out at the worst time it's not as popular as it used to be i hope it is because I, I will be watching series four and you know hopefully there is something good in it and they do new stuff or maybe this is in like they were contracted mm. to do 70 episodes so seven seasons yeah seven seasons of rick and morty how long do you think rick and morty can go on for do you think it can become the next simpsons and be at like oh no i I don't i hope not i hope not no like in my opinion i think because it is the sort of show where you could literally tell a story about anything because of you know the nature of yeah and all these different timelines and stuff so but even but even then they don't want to make it a show about everything they kind of you could tell that dan Harmon is more interested in characters than he is in yeah in concept like i hope the show like it's not one of those shows that keeps going on it has an actual structured ending and everything gets wrapped up but we'll just have to see if that happens i do kind of like the idea of you know shows ending at a certain point you know as long as they know when to cut it off like uh bojack horseman's got six seasons now i think yeah it's got a six season coming out this year and in my head i'm kind of like well when is it going to end Mm -hmm. because they're already tying up a good few bunch of loose ends as it is and you can't imagine it going on forever because that's it, like because of how it's written. I would like to think that Rick and Morty does the exact same thing, that it doesn't go on forever because it has a point where it needs to stop. Because yeah. there comes a point where you're kind of like, well, where can we go f- next from here? We've literally done everything that we did. To the point where they literally turned Rick into a pickle. <laughs> where else can they go, you know? Yeah, it's very Death true. of Jerry, that's mm-hmm. where they can go. Um, <laughs> but no, so that that's my opinion. Hopefully Rick and Morty season four comes out and it's good. Are you excited for Rick and Morty season four? I wouldn't say I'm over the moon. I'll watch it, but I'm not like, oh my god, season four! I can't wait. I'm counting down the days. But yeah, I'll watch it. It's a, it's a good show. Like, I can't I can't lie too much. I think uh, the, some of the fans are obnoxious, and um, like we said, they they overhype it a bit. But it's a fun show to watch. It's it doesn't take up that long to watch. I watched it in like three hours. So yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. I'm not like super excited, but I'm mildly excited. Mm. I'll be giving it a watch. Uh, I've watched all the seasons of Rick and Morty so far, so I've got to like turn it out to next to see what happens next in it. Uh, I'm yeah. not as big a fan as everybody thinks, as uh, as the rest of the world of Rick and Morty fans are. You, I, you did buy an art book, though. Yeah, um, so. but like you know, because I, I, mean, yeah. you know, I did buy the art book, but like that's. I'm surprised I, you don't have a Rick and Morty T-shirt. I wouldn't wear one. No, me neither. No, like I, I, it's <laughs> embarrassing to I, wear. I can just imagine like someone like this fan, and he just all he wears is Rick and Morty t-shirts, and he just walks up to people on the street, and he's like, "I'm Rick and Morty," just yeah. spouting annoying catchphrases. I think that's why maybe a bit of the excitement's gone down for this season is because some of the fan base, not all of the fan base, like just the, some, the, just the, some, the super hardcore fans will just spout annoying catchphrases from Rick in people's faces, and they're the type of people that will buy you know rick and morty t-shirts from tfury.com and all these different artists and you know they'll go to the conventions and dan Harmon will just be looking at them wearing a rick and morty t-shirt going i fucking like like, (laughs) what has my life become what has my life become i'm fucking satisfying a bunch of nerds that think they know philosophy um but no that's what i think i mean i hope it does well i hope I, i mean i'm excited for it i'm looking forward to watching it um i'm looking forward to november when it comes out so yeah i'll watch it all then and who knows maybe it'll be okay 
Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Hopefully it's better than season three. Because yeah. season three was lackluster at best. And I would have liked to have seen something better for it. Yeah, I, th- I thought it was okay. But uh, nothing on season one and two, for mm, sure. That's for sure. Right. All right, you guys, that just about wraps us up for the Rick and Morty comments below. Thanks you so much for watching this online. If you're watching this on our Facebook page, please click on the link below to our YouTube channel and subscribe to that. However, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, please we'll go to our Facebook page and like us there as well. The more likes you share for our videos will help us get a bigger audience and help us get out of there. Also, if you want to hear us give an opinion about what we what you would like to hear us talk about next, simply share it to us, write us on our page or even on the comments down below, and we will get to it and probably give an opinion on it. Definitely. So, see you later, guys. Ciao.